All right, everybody. My name is David Triplett. People call me Trip. And I'm going to let you guys know about an article that I read in the Coloradoan today. So it basically is saying that there are a lot of restaurants that are fed up with the, these um, third-party delivery apps like Grubhub, Postmates, and uh, DoorDash. And it goes on talking about how there are many restaurants that are realizing that they are losing out if they do not offer some sort of delivery service. Okay? It's just that many smaller restaurants cannot afford the upwards to 30% uh, commission that these apps require. And and I get that. Uh, if you order something that is 10 bucks, that restaurant is not getting that 10 bucks. They are getting only seven bucks of that $10 order. And uh, Grubhub is pocketing three dollars or any of these apps and it's not entirely fair for these smaller stores that are working on margin they need that uh, extra money so that they can support their business and have it grow and I understand that and uh, it it doesn't help them if these apps are uh, charging these higher prices for them. And so what's going on it, here in Fort Collins is that there are uh, restaurants that are uh, joining together and they are creating another third party type service that is going to have better customer service because that's also another issue that is brought up in uh, these uh, uh, third party apps that these restaurants have. Um, and even though, yes, there's 24 hour customer support with these apps, uh, it's just that a lot of times there's a lot of wait times for these customers and they can't necessarily get them resolved in a timely manner and that's kind of ridiculous and it hurts especially you know as a driver trying to call uh, customer support to get an issue taken care of sometimes it's two three fifteen minute thirty minute wait in order to get uh, an issue solved and that is definitely not something that we want to have as drivers and you know restaurants don't want to call in because they run into the same issue and think about the customers and so these restaurants are wising wisening up they see that we need to offer a delivery service so let's go ahead and make our own uh, delivery service and so with this it's adding more competition for these bigger apps and maybe they will offer a, a better incentive for the restaurants that can't afford to have their own delivery service but at the same time they want to have the ability to have this service offered to their customers. So what will, uh, this brings up what Grubhub and these other third party services need to do because I see many issues that kind of make it difficult for restaurants to be able to offer offer a delivery service for their customers because it, 
they're faced with a catch-22. They either don't do it and lose customers, or they do do it and lose money. Because, sure, they're going to get more customers uh, and more return customers because they're getting uh, more orders, but at the same time, they're losing out on profits because of the commissions. And so what these third-party apps need to do is try to figure out, one, how to become more profitable without taking such a large portion from these smaller restaurants. Maybe offer uh, a subscription service for these smaller restaurants. That way they don't have to see such a huge margin uh, taken away from their uh, their orders. And also they need to offer better customer service. Maybe what they may need to do is um, start offering a, a way to where restaurants can go ahead and handle um, these customer complaints and get it taken care of within the app on the tablet. And that way, you know, if Grubhub or Postmates or whatever customer service can't help them in a timely manner, they just call the restaurant and the restaurant is able to, one, refund the order, two, uh, offer credit, or three, you know, get the customer taken care of. What's so hard about implementing that in the app? Just a few more buttons, a few more permissions, and then, you know, off and away, the customer's taken care of by the restaurant, and it's easily done without too much headache or wait time for customers. And not only that, um, restaurants don't have to call customer care to, uh, for simple things. Like, let's say customer calls the restaurant saying, hey, my address is actually this. Oh, let's go ahead and get that taken care of. And the customer just, uh, the restaurant goes ahead and puts in the new address. It updates the customer's information, letting us drivers know, hey, you're actually going to this. And then automatically calculating what the mileage pay should be if they keep doing mileage pay. And that way, you know, it it's a little bit simpler. We don't have to wait around for that. And not only that, but another thing that hurts these small restaurants is when us drivers, hey, we want to make money and we don't want to see these lowball offers. I get that, okay? But as a customer point of view, well, maybe I can't offer a tip. And so uh, the restaurant can't control what the customer does with a tip. And so if there is some sort of incentive for people to take these lowball offers, maybe we won't, the restaurants won't see orders that are waiting an hour, two hours, three hours, or however long it, it takes before somebody comes to pick up the freaking dang order. It's, it's ridiculous. You know, and maybe if there, it was some sort of incentive for drivers to pick up these small lowball orders, these restaurants won't have to remake food or, you know, cancel an order after they've already made it and they're out of money. It's ridiculous. You know, it's something that needs to be addressed because overall, when us drivers don't pick up these orders, it's passed around from one driver to the next driver until somebody finally decides to pick it up. 
And I understand that, yes, we have to make sure that these orders make sense for us as drivers. And, you know, reject away, no problem. But, you know, these apps need to address the situation, make it more beneficial for us to accept those orders that we don't necessarily want to take on the regular. Because that's going to increase the driver's acceptances. And it will make it so that customers are taken care of, restaurants are taken care of. You know, you got to look into this or else restaurants are going to start coming up with their own third party delivery services for all these small restaurants that need to have some sort of delivery, but can't necessarily do it themselves or want to or have the time, effort or money to be able to uh, put man manpower into doing deliveries. You know, sure, you know, say, oh, people say, oh, you just have to hire somebody to drive a car. They don't realize that there's other factors in there. Even though each driver has insurance, their own insurance, do you think if that person gets into an accident that the customer is going to want to go out, out, off of the driver's insurance to try to get some money. Heck, they want to try to go for uh, after the restaurant because they feel that the restaurant is at fault, that it's the restaurant's driver. The restaurant uh, is, uh, the driver is working for the restaurant and they can try to get more money out of the, the insurance company because it's going to be the restaurant's insurance not the driver's insurance. And everybody is going to fight around. So the restaurant has to have some sort of insurance. Not only that, but the restaurant has to um, have uh, all these different types of taxes and insurance uh, that they have to put on the drivers that they hire. Whereas if they have a third-party uh, delivery service do it, they don't have to worry about that mess. But, you know, they need to make sure that they offer, uh, get some, some sort of delivery service that makes sense for them. And if Grubhub, Postmates, DoorDash, they are not making sense for that restaurant, they're going to come up with these other, uh, services that may potentially cut into our uh, pay unless they allow us drivers that work with these third-party apps to drive for them. So this is something that we have to look into as drivers, but also these third-party apps, if they want to stay competitive, they need to figure out a way to allow these smaller businesses to be able to keep some of their uh, more of their money to make it more profitable for them so that they don't start creating these other services for themselves sure if they allow independent contractors like us to work for those uh, services then it's great for us drivers because we have another source of income to be able to add to our repertoire but if they're hiring W-2 type workers, you know, it's not effective for us to try to drive for them because who knows how horrible the pay might be and we're no longer our own bosses if we uh, decide to sign up with that service. And so these services can, uh, new services that are created because of this need for a more cost effective for the restaurants, uh, drivers, uh, or delivery apps, 
you know, what's going to, how is that going to affect us who decide to, to work with Grubhub or DoorDash or all these other major delivery app services? So, you major guys, you need to look into this. You need to try to figure out some way to be more affordable for the restaurant. You need to figure out some way to incentivize drivers to take those low ball orders, those no tip orders, to be, make sure that the restaurants get served, those customers get served, and still make it profitable for us drivers. You also need to figure out, you know, how to have better customer support for the drivers, for the restaurants, and for the customers. Nobody wants to wait 30 minutes to finally get somebody. Nobody really wants to send out an email and maybe within 24 hours get a response. It needs to get taken care of quickly. If you want to stay relevant, look into this. Well, I got to get going. And uh, thank you very much for watching, if you're watching. And see you next time.